Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the debut episode of House of Royale. Welcome, everyone. And I am so honored to have our gorgeous guest on today, Miss Scarlett Park. Hello, Scarlett. Hello, Rochelle. studio thank you for having me absolutely thank you for being here thank you for blessing us with your knowledge everything you're about to say today is literally changing history I have goosebumps right now you are bringing solutions to the table we're not just here to trash talk you guys we're not just here to complain about the industry Scarlett is so innovative and so smart and she is bringing such a blessing to not only women, but the music industry as a whole. So I can't wait to talk to you about all of this. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay, so for those of you who don't know Scarlett, I would just like to say that she wears 10,000 hats, like most of us in this <laughs> industry. Um, you grew up in Seattle, Washington. You you have choir on your resume, you have opera singing, you were a wedding planner, you are the founder of Park Ave, which is a music networking event. Um, and now you are the creator of the first ever producer bag for women, and it's called the Dream Girl Producer Bag, which we will talk about later. So with that said, Tell us how it all began. How did you get your foot in the door in the music industry? Thank you. Yeah, wow. Hearing it all back, I'm just seeing everything flash before my eyes. I've been in the music industry, I guess, for 10 years now. Um, and that's from the very beginning of starting to go to college for um, and high school music and Opera, like you said, I kind of have gone on a very wide and broad journey trying to figure out what my sound was. Um, my music for me has always been very therapeutic. And so it has led me to this point where now I am producing my own music. But I started just writing poems. And I started, that was when I was nine. I had my first poem published when I was 11. And then I had a friend who, not a friend, but somebody referred me to an opera vocal coach and they said, well, you should try this. You have a beautiful voice. And I was like, too many rules, not into it. It's again, kind of already back then, I, I really hated like the structure of the industry, right? I felt like it was kind of took away from, from the joy and the peace that music brought me. And uh, so I, I moved more to jazz, which is where I stay and where I love um, and have continued to kind of explore different jazz, pop, soul, funk. But it's been a journey, yeah, of about 10 years. Amazing. Yeah, vocal lessons, same. I can't deal. It's especially, I mean, artists are super ADHD, and it is definitely difficult <laughs> for us to follow that structure and, like, do vocal warm-ups every day. I'm like, oh, my God. Um, so I understand that. Um, and so the jazz stuff, like, the first few songs that you ever wrote, it was more in that genre? Mm -hmm. Um, it was all very singer songwritery, um, very piano and vocals. And then but the first band that I had ended up being um actually my first bass player I found on Craigslist. Um, I was from a small town and I posted an ad on Craigslist, like with a little video of me singing at my aunt's dining room table, just being like, Hey, I'm a singer looking for some people who would want to be in a band with me. <laughs> um, and I'm not even in the city of Seattle yet. I'm I'm 19. I'm living across the water um, in Port Orchard, which is where I'm from. And I end up connecting with this bass player named Matt Wexler. And he was my bass player for a really long time and helped me kind of dive into these different sounds. Because, yeah, I started out in jazz and it has just developed. I Like my first record... I filmed majority on tape. It was all analog. It was all one take played, you know, all organic instruments. I was very kind of the opposite of what I'm doing now, which is so funny because I was like, I want it to be all organic and real and authentic and, you know, feel that energy in the room, which is still very important. But yeah, you're lucky that you had that foundation because yeah. if you're if if you're a pop artist and you grow up directly in the studio with your vocal chain and the fully produced pop music, it's like w once you're on stage yeah. to carry a show, it's very difficult. So to grow up with that foundation is 
And I think that's kind of, it's, it's what allowed me to have the perspective that I have now because I've seen and been in bands where it's a very different culture than the pop and hip hop scene that I've experienced here in LA for the last couple of years, which was just night and day difference of kind of how people create. Um, and so I think that that's one of the biggest things that I would recommend to every artist is just to play with as many live instrumentalists as you can and feel like that's where you're going to really feel the love. The love. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And to see them communicate with each other through their eyes right. is amazing. And yeah. It almost lifts your vocal into a different frequency. Oh, like my gosh. It really carries you. Well, it gives you that freedom to just, like, improv. Yeah, You know? The tra tracks are great, and they're, and, and they're easy to, you know, once they're done, they're done, and that's nice. And, and so you can show up anywhere, and you know what your set is going to be, and it, that there's the less stress and less coordination and less people... You know, there's I had a band of like seven people at one point where I'm, you know, 21 trying to manage seven people and get everybody to a show on time. And and, you know, we're, we're getting paid one hundred dollars for seven people, you know, and it's just uh, so it comes. I think both aspects come with their struggles. But um, yeah, definitely the, the jazz is something that has carried me and I want to bring into kind of current current music and what I'm influenced by now. Yes. Well, it's definitely a lot more fun to watch live. I'll say that. Um, okay. So question number two, do you want the universe one or do you want the bag? No, let's do. Yeah. I love these note cards, by the way. Oh, love these. You. This is for those of us that have severe ADHD. Okay. <laughs> I, let's, you know what? We're going to get into the nitty gritty <laughs> right away. I love it. I love you it. guys don't have an attention span. So here we're going <laughs> to grab your attention right now. Okay, so we're going to talk about what everyone does not want to talk about, which is the elephant in the room, uh, being a woman in music. Mm -hmm. We face a lot of adversity and Constant. trauma. Yeah. So have you ever dealt with situations that have held you back, including sexism, gatekeeping, power dynamics, being stereotyped? Oh, for sure. Being put in a box. Like, can you speak on that? Because I know, ladies, every singer I talk to in L.A., you guys have a million stories like this, but we're still so afraid to speak about it publicly. So we're just going to speak about it mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> Assuming you have been through this stuff. Yes. Um, I know there's... Obviously, there's a million and a half things that can happen in a studio. <clears throat> And I have not experienced all of them, but I have experienced a lot of sexism. I have experienced a lot of belittling, a lot of power dynamics, definitely some sexual assaults, definitely just overstepping by like in the most ridiculous way when, you know, you're, you're intending to be there for a professional experience. Um, you know, things like not getting your mixes because you didn't want to go on a date with somebody. Things like oh, the session was free, and then, but now that I don't want you to touch me, it's $300, you know, things like that. And and there's just really nobody to go and talk to about these things. And I think that I am ready to maybe build a space where people can talk about these things and eventually would love to have some sort of protocol. I know? feel like a lot of Dream the Girl time... Dream Girl Studios. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, I've, and we're going to talk more on that. But I feel like a lot of the time people will respond with, well, you should have known better. Mm. Or, you know, mm -hmm. you knew what you were doing. Mm. You let it happen. I can, I can honestly say when I first moved to Los Angeles, the first big time producer I met, he put me in a very dangerous situation. Mm. And I, I had zero intention of doing anything sexual with him. And so that scenario was definitely forced. And I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and blame it on that as to why other things ended up happening between me and certain producers. Um, but I think for most women, especially back in the day, you, you were programmed to like follow this Y2K narrative of like, you're just the hot girl, mm. you know, meant to be showcased as this pop right. singer. And, and if the producer wants to hook up with you, well then great, because mm. you're probably going to get this, that, or the other, How or bad favored. Do you mm -hmm. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want your career? Yeah. yeah. And it's like to reprogram our mind and think, oh my God, I can actually have a career without anyone touching me. Like that's, Mm. It's so insane to me that we still have 
this issue. Like years later, I, I'm still talking to all these girls and it's still happening. And I'm like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm I'm grateful to be alive and and creating and a producer at this time. I think that I definitely would not have I would have given up on music um, had I gone straight into just working with producers. Like I said, I think the thing that that is so important is making sure that you have the right team around you. But the, everybody's out here just saying whatever, though, to make you feel safe. And that's the most dangerous part, which is why I think it's important that women work together, because whether or not a man can say you're safe is very different from how he may act a couple hours from now. And until you can have that time to really build a personal relationship with somebody, and if somebody's going to show that, that they're interested in building a relationship with you past, well, if you're not going to come to my studio, da 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 okay, well, then I don't need to work with you. Thank you. I'm so glad that you have these contacts. I'm so glad that you have all the success. I really am. I wish you nothing but the best. But my success is also very directly related to how I feel day to day mentally. And like, I can't find success in my art if I'm walking around hating the actions that I'm making. Yes, absolutely. You know? Yeah, I am holding myself accountable. Just doing this show, I'm like, okay, now you, yeah. it's like having an accountability partner. But it's, you know, but it's like knowing, it's like knowing that there are other opportunities than these men. Yeah. Like if somebody, like if you, the second you feel uncomfortable, First of all, I send a message to every single person. I'm like, hey, I just want to let you know that like I, you know, I'm looking to looking to link up. If there's any, this is what this is. And if you're gonna, if you and if you're already, if that, if me sending that message to you is gonna set you off, bye. Yep. Period. Because now I have it in writing. This is what I'm here. This is the agreement, you know. And men aren't used to doing that because men are used that they've run rampant for so long in this industry, you know. Mm -hmm. Obviously, and again, I'm not anti-man, dream girl is not anti-man, right? But I am anti bully i'm anti abuser obviously yeah but it's it's gotten out of control and it's really just a matter of like if people are willing to talk or not because that's the best way to keep you know the best way to keep control is to keep people silent and oppressed yeah um and so that's kind of what i think female producers have this beautiful opportunity now that you can absolutely learn how to produce your own shit and you can absolutely like come in knowing we just we we just have to be better educated and better organized. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want a list of ten female producers that I right. can text or call whenever. Right. And I don't have that. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna have it. Women are starting to feel empowered and safe enough to not be laughed out of a room when they're like, "Oh, I produce this." Because the even you know I've had so many people be like, "Oh, you pressed all the buttons." <laughs> you, I mean, con still all the time. Oh, you did it by yourself. <gasps> Who helped you? Who did this? And that's, you know, I'm I'm a confident woman, but like I that stuff still is, you know, they're all little pokes and little pokes add up to big bruises where it hurts. You know, it's like, how can I value myself when I'm constantly not being valued by others? Also, men like when you I literally just posted a DM publicly a few weeks ago mm. from a male producer who is affiliated to Universal, mm. and I maybe he was wasted. Yeah. I, I hope that you were, because I would like to think if you were sober, you wouldn't have sent this message. But he literally was like, hey, baby, I miss you. Mm. After having multiple, like, uh, back and forth about, like, professional writing oh, opportunities yeah. for this girl group. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, come to the studio. Let's hang out. And I screenshotted that shit so fast. Mm -hmm. And I posted it. Mm -hmm. And instead of, like, trying to sue me for defamation, he just was like, why you got to be so mean? <laughs> like, that's your response? Like, they're not even upset about it anymore? Like, it, what is it going to take? Like, what, what do we have to do? And, and so then it's like, okay, well, if you guys aren't going to listen to us or respect us, then the only answer is that we have to do it ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, to to bring it out a little bit as well and to not just look at it in the music industry sense. I mean, this is what's happening in the overall dating pool. Like yes. Women don't feel safe around men anymore. And so women are either treating men like garbage or they're completely abstaining and being like, I'm good. And it's, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's impossible to have, you know, like find love these days, it seems like. It's like, it's very toxic. It's very... 
pe- everybody's operating from a place of defense. And we're at this position because people haven't been held accountable for too long, you know? And, like, I have gone through my own accountability journey over the past couple of years of how I contributed to my own toxicity. Like, this is not me coming with a spear and not, you know, looking at my own mirror. It's It's all of us evolving together of, like, how can we... Because now it's it's no longer like the people against the people, you know, there's there's bigger things at play here. Like we're in a recession. We all need to be working together and not taking advantage of each other and supporting each other. Yeah. During these crazy times. I'm so inspired by the women that have come forward with these stories like Aubrey O'Day just mm-hmm. recently came forward. Um, there's Jesse Reyes. Yeah. Ray video. had a really great song called Ice Cream Man on her album. It is, people are talking about it. Yeah. And there's, there's going to become these sides where it's like, are you an ally of women or are you a, a creep? And I do, I do <laughs> want to get into the shame aspect um, of it all because I, I obviously tend to blame myself all the time yeah. and I feel so ashamed of yeah. my behavior in the past. And also, like, you brought up dating. Like, last year I was dating someone and um, it was a very – I thought he was an amazing person and mm. I didn't know until – month two and now we're in month three and it was like oh my god I'm gonna die like Mm. and it and I couldn't get him yeah you know to leave and I I had to get all my friends involved I mean it was a very scary situation Mm. and it does make me not want to date ever again Mm. which is like a whole nother aspect of like this concept of like being a boss bitch Mm -hmm. like how do we balance Owning everything and being a powerful woman and then finding a man that's okay with that and, like, supporting us and, like, not murdering us. Mm-hmm. Um, right. No, I'm, that's real. <laughs> yeah, it is real. And it, I I still uh, – and during lockdown, too, I went through a really terrifying situation as well. Mm-hmm. And I take full responsibility for the fact that – um. I I was locked in a studio for for three months with a full band, Mm. and that part was amazing, but I did, there was a situation with the the lead producer, you know what I mean? And I have to take responsibility for that part, but when it comes to, like, guns and cocaine and, Mm -hmm. you know, like, sex workers coming in and out of the studio, it's like, I can't blame yeah. myself for that like that person put me in yeah. a dangerous situation once again yeah and I'm just like looking at God like what did I do to like continuously be yeah. put in these dangerous situations and it's like no it's the world it is the world and it is the world and and it's that's why it's so literally vital that we learn how to be independent in the ways that keep us safe why because do you- we are I I definitely have done things where I'm like, I'm being independent and I'm actually putting myself in danger. Yes. And so I think like figuring out what ways are is healthy independent and which ways are toxic independent for me specifically um, has been learning how to produce my own music and no, learning how to communicate properly and learning how to set my own boundaries. That way I'm not, lu- you know, lured by the possibility of of fame or success if I say no to this person my career is over you know like all of these guilty things that we can feel that can push us to do things that make us that actually you know hurt our our reputation and our relationship with ourselves and our relationship with with the universe and spirit you know like these things that that deter us and take us off the path that we're supposed to be on and I've just had like such a spiritual experience in creating this bag and like being so isolated where I've lived in the, because I've lived in the city ever since I've done music. I've always, I've, I gig in the city, I work in the city, I live in the city. And I have literally gone, because I've, I've reached this point where you're talking about where I'm exhausted. I don't feel like I can go into spaces and feel safe. I don't feel like I can, I can create freely. I feel dumb or I feel unwanted or I feel, you know, what on ta- you know, not as talented because I'm not doing this because I'm not showing up like this or I'm not, or whatever. I just, it, it, overall feelings of inadequacy and dissatisfaction with myself and my art. And so that is like All why that is I so was like monumental. I, and uh, and really quickly before yeah. we get to this bag, because we need to spend the rest of the episode talking about all that. Um, why do you think it's so difficult for women to get along? Mm, yeah, I mean, so me personally, this is actually a share. A, a, this is actually a story I've wanted to share for a while because I had a really broken relationship with women for a very very long time. Like, could not keep good girlfriends around. And at the beginning of 2020, I, which 
this is also the kind of the origin story of Dream Girl. I decided to do a worthiness and manifestation and inner healing like six week workshop. Amazing. Because I was like, I don't want the world to end and I'm going to come out the same bitter bitch that I went in as, you know? And that's just facts. Like me and my fiance broke up. I had to take a good hard look in the mirror and say, are you the person you want to be if the world was to end right now? Mm. And the answer was no. Woo. <laughs> and that's some so, deep shit. Yeah. Yeah. And I just had to kind of dive into that pool and be like, look, my life is a reflection of what I'm allowing into it. So I need to really buckle up and get ready for this ride of facing my demons and becoming my own dream girl. And for me, that was wanting to have really beautiful relationships with women, my mother included. I didn't talk to my mom for five years. And that was my personal beef with women was wounds with my mother. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of women have their own personal wounds. Obviously, I think that why women, why can't women get along is a very, very broad and kind of like could take a million years to answer. Um, I think it's more, you know, person to person. If you can find people that are willing to, to like this, like you're doing right now, like talk about their traumas and be open and say, Hey, I see you and I'm willing to work with you. And I, can relate to you and I want to sympathize with you and I don't want to compete with you. Yeah. You know, why do we compete? We compete because historically women needed to be taken care of because they couldn't work. And so they needed the men. And so the, the yes. women competed for the rich men. We're not in that situation anymore. And so it's, it's, you know, unlearning years and years and years of, of systematic programming. Right. That you have to find the most successful man or you're never going to be able to bear children and the world will die. <laughs> you yeah, know, like yeah. like the, the lizard brain in us, you know. Well, and also like my own advice to myself because I tend to hold grudges. Like if I tell someone like, you know, I know that this guy is not good, so please mm -hmm. don't go by yourself. Right. And then I find out that they've been like DMing the person and right. like, and they'll go and do it anyway. And then it's mm -hmm. like, the reason why I get so upset is because now it's my name if something bad happens to you, mm -hmm. you know? And I get upset about those things, not because I want to be in a fight with a girl, mm -hmm. but it's just like, I'm trying to help you and protect you and you're yeah. not listening to me. And it's just like it, being heard, I think yeah. too, is a big thing. And then also just for me, I'm like, look, every girl is so different and they're like, every person is fighting their own fight. But for women, it's like, let them just do their thing. Mm -hmm. Leave it alone. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of us want to get in there and like, how about this? And how about that? And like, mm -hmm. I love to like, you know, direct or like make right. it bigger yeah. and better and like yeah. help them. And it's like, no, you can't manage anybody anymore. You yeah. need to take a step back, girl, yeah. manage yourself. Yeah. You know, I think that when you pour into other people's cup for so long and you end up on empty girl. Yeah. That was me. At the, that was me last year. Uh, at, I threw a stage for South by Southwest and just was kind of rocked by how I really thought the people that I thought were there as my, as my people and my crew turns out didn't even really like me and had just been kind of, you know, happy to take my, my referrals and my discounts and my this and my that and everything that I would offer them. And, but behind my back was saying, well, she's just so this, she's so that. And I heard them, you know, I, I, heard one of the guys I was working with literally on speakerphone just like talking and I just like broke my heart but to the it but it brought me to the beautiful point where I was like I need to honestly I'm I am running on empty yeah I don't have the energy for this right now and I need to figure out what does does deserve my energy because there's nothing worse than giving your energy and your time and affection and your love to something that just rejects you yeah and like unfortunately we like a lot of things I've been rejected a lot yeah and it sucks and I hate it and it hurts every time and it's like salt on a wound every time it never gets easier I hate it it gives me anxiety it gives me panic attacks think the thought of rejection the thought of failure the thought of all of that you know but what's what is what has really helped me has just asking for help yeah instead of trying to offer help all the time because yeah because I actually need a lot more help than I can even give anybody. You know yes, what I mean? Yes. And it's been, and it's helped me deepen my relationships with the with the women in my life. Be, just being blunt and being like, "Hey, you know, I really want to be a better friend to you." Yeah. And I need to know what you need from me. Yeah. If I'm overstepping, because maybe how I'm thinking that I'm showing me being a friend 
you're like, damn, she's so needy and annoying. Like, I just need this, you know? And I think just kind of stepping outside and like being ultra aware, which is hard to do because everybody has a different perception, you know? But yeah, boundaries. It yeah. is so weird because you want to be besties with your music friends. And it's like mixing yeah. with personal. It is a line. It's a blurry line. It's a blurry line that's never going to be identified either. Like yeah. there's never going to be a thing where like we're just because music is energy and passion. And like when passion comes into the room, I mean, anything can happen. Yeah. So it's like how do, that's the other thing with, you know, what that's that's so muddy about producers and you know some of these relationships and because, art in general and art because sometimes you do go into a studio and it's this like magical vibe and you're like I'm here for this yeah you know but like how do we properly learn how to respect each other and respect each other's boundaries I think yeah the yeah question that we've arrived at it's and communication and not holding the grudge. Like, really. Yeah, right. Like, don't make me feel bad for what my boundaries are. My boundaries have nothing to do with you. Yeah. My boundaries have to do with what I need to self-preserve. And that's it. Yeah. And it, you can't, you know, but it's there's a big, it's all ego in this. Yes. Which, girl, Amen. I got a big ass ego. Like, who doesn't? You yeah. Know? Like, you have to, to get to where we are, you have to have a kind of blind delusion and ego to find success because you know, our, our our society wants us to kind of stay working the nine to five, doing the whatever and the plugged into the whatever, you know, like it's to get to these points, you have to kind of be bold and daring. And yeah. so there's just this constant battle and dance of like, what's good, bold and what's bad, bold. Exactly. Right. Yeah. People do want you to walk into the room and have the answer. Like, yeah. oh, maybe she's going to come with a hit record. Like, right. And it's like, well, you can't be shy or insecure when people are like, no, hoping that you got to. <laughs> yeah. You got to go in there and be like, I'm the hottest thing ever. Yeah. Like delusional confidence is definitely like part of this recipe for success. Yes, it is. <laughs> You know, matched with hard work, but like, you know, for real. I mean, we're constantly having to reinvent ourselves and yeah. Especially as a woman, you know, like you have how do you, you have to stay relevant? And like yes. if you're if if you're not gonna just use the body card and the sex card, how do you get respect from men in the industry? Women coming together because there's strength in numbers, and then we won't even have to worry about the male opinion. <laughs> well, you know what <laughs> my kind of thought process on that is like, well, if you know, say I start Dream Girl Studios and Dream Girl Studios starts pumping out massive hits. That's making lots of money. Then they're going to have no choice but to respect us. So period. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Money talks. So right? we're just going to pump out these hit records, people. Exactly. Okay. So let's get into the <laughs> um, the Dream Girl universe. What time is it, by the way? 2.30? Oh, good. Perfect. Beautiful. We're making good time. Yes. We're on, on task, on topic. So speaking of women taking over the planet, uh, can you tell everyone about the Dream Girl universe? Yes. The Dream Girl universe started as a song that I wrote for my ex-fiance. And I wrote it as a love song. And when we broke up, I ended up having to record it after we broke up. And so I was singing it from a very different perspective. And the chorus goes, did you really mean it when you said I was your dream girl? Did you really mean it when you said I was your dream girl? And I realized after the fact that it came from such a place of, am I good enough? Right? Yeah. And I'm like, damn, because he was a great guy. He treated me great. I had no reason to really think that. So I was like, very clearly, that was something very deep within me where I'm writing a love song that I think is a love song, where really it's it's a question for validation. So then, of course, you know, me being the, the ultra mega 1000 deep level thinker and overthinker that I am, I was like, well, what is the meaning of dream girl? And who decided what this means anyways? And, you know, you go back and dream girl is all about being the perfect dream girl for a man, for his vision, right? What he wants, the sexiest, she's whatever, whatever, whatever. It, she's my dream girl. But I'm like, has a girl, like, what would my version of a dream girl be if it was me? Like, what is my version, the dream version of myself look like? So then I kind of ask myself this question. I release dream girl and I kind of, and I go on this year long journey at the beginning of 2022. Um, to find that, find that out. I'm like, what is the dream version of myself look like? What is, what are the things that I haven't done that I want to do? And why haven't I done them? And how can I get there? Like basically, where do I want to be? Where am I? How big is the gap? What are the, you know, can I build a bridge? 
and music which, production. Which, by the way, is such a huge thing for women, like ladies, to look in the mirror and ask yourself, what do I like? Mm -hmm. What do I love? It is, yeah. Like, what gets me off? What inspires me? Like, really knowing who you are. And it is such a life-changing thing when it you is. can start putting those pieces together. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, down to my my personal style, down to everything. Everything has changed since then. And I realized that I had very, very, very much been living my life to appeal to whatever man I was with. How uh, how many times have you changed your hobbies, your interests, your times, your schedule, your plans for what the guy wants to do? Oh, my God. When I was younger, it was every guy. You're a chameleon. Like it, right. And that's how I felt. I'm like, I'm a chameleon. Like, who am I? You know, like, what... Who am I? What is this? What what are, what are the things that I love? Obviously, I go directly back to music. That's always been my day one. It's always been my number one. And I always wanted to be a music producer. I was like, in my dream, dream, dream life, like, I would be a music producer. I would I would die. That would be so cool. Like, you know, it was just yeah. like made me, gave me that giddy little inner child of like, I'm the one who's helping make, you know, music that's that some other 11-year-old, 12-year-old girl, you know, like I was listening to Christina Aguilera, Genie in a Bottle, you know, I, I made that. A girl made that. And then to, you know, then it's a rabbit, been a rabbit hole of going down and finding out that this, only 2% of producers are women. And, yeah. and it's, there's a reason why I never thought it was possible because it really hasn't been possible. And uh, it just gave me this sense of purpose um, that felt so legacy where I was like, wow, I think that I want to spend, literally I want to spend my time on earth trying to help girls be their own dream girl. Same. And you know what? Before lockdown, that was so epic, by the way. <laughs> we need to put in a pause for everyone. Chills. Uh, before lockdown, I would have never thought that this Someone like you bringing this to the table, the thought of me being a producer, oh my God, what a joke. Right. How dumb do I think I am that I would actually have right. the balls to do that? I and, mean, and when you Google produce music producer, like, you know, yeah. it's all men that show up. Yeah. Like it's, you have to type in female music producer to mm -hmm. even see a photo of a girl. And... So I empathize with all of the girls out there that think to themselves, I could never do that mm. because you can, you can, you, you plug the shit in and you put the headphones on and get the mic to work, get it all mm -hmm. to work. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it. Yeah. It's not, it's not as hard as you think. And, and the level of joy that it brings surpasses any learning curve. Yeah. Well, it is hard for me. Like for for people like me, it is difficult and I don't have any patience. And I want to do a kickball change pirouette and put on a costume and like yeah. you know what I mean? I want to yeah. run around and be a kid and be be the artist and like write the song and then sing the song. It's like to sit down at a computer is definitely more difficult for me. Yeah. But when I have a woman showing me how to do it mm -hmm. and it's like a cute bag and the visual right. and the colors and the sounds and yeah. like just having it be the aesthetic, it, you're turning it on its head. Mm -hmm. And it's like giving a five-year-old a different way to learn. Right. Exactly. Is what the fuck I need to learn how to produce. <laughs> right. I mean, in the end of the day, every artist should be a studio owner. Yes. Like every artist, that's your gym bag. Like how do you not have the tools to create what you need to create? You know, just not even from for for just females, just women. I mean, I call it the dream girl producer bag because it's literally it's been my dream. And yeah. I am, I, you know, I'm dream girl. I'm the brand. It's for it's for to help redefine literally what dream girl means to the younger female generation that like you can, you're a dream girl because you're living your dreams, girl. Yes. You know, like that's it. You know, it. it I think it's just it. I I would love to be a facilitator in my lifetime to just help people feel good about who they are. And I know that sounds very cliche, but it's it's getting harder and harder to be authentic, even though we're constantly looking for originality. Does mm. it feel like that to you ever? Well, social media is curated to portray perfectionism. Like right. it's the filter. It's the face tune, right. you know. And that's why that's why I'm really, really, really excited for people to go and produce 
in random places with this thing because this opens up your ability to record music anywhere. I produced a song at the Grand Canyon. I went to a cabin in the woods. I went to on a train. I'm going, you know, I've been to 16 different cities and it's been so like I was in a hammock last weekend in Austin, Texas, like literally making that. a beat and, and singing. I'm like, you know what? I am going to sing with the birds and the birds in the background and, and the waterfall behind me. You know why? Also, because we're moving into the future and because AI is, is already able to generate things that have already been done. So if you want to make something new and original, authentic, why don't you do something that only a human can do? Yeah, like hurry up before it's too late. <laughs> like grab your bag, go do something that's so authentic to you as a human because that's where we are now, right? It's human versus robots. <laughs> but like if you want to survive, I, I feel like in the future as an artist, like you have to double down on your art and you have to be able to create as fast as the industry and consumers are consuming. And the only way to do that is to own your shit. Do you think the major labels are going to be around forever? I mean, I think that they will. I think that it's their turn to now be manipulated. I think they've been manipulating for a long time and I think now they're going to start becoming manipulated by the people that have the followings that they need to stay relevant. Um, but I think that there are just such big corporations and conglomerates at this point that it would, I don't, I don't see them like dissolving. You know, I think that they're, they're definitely going to change. Yeah. You know, but I would love to equip all the, all the record labels. Like while your artist is on tour, they should have a music studio in their, on their bus. Exactly. You know, That's like, true. yeah. So yeah. Um, just opening up the possibilities to just stay creative. You're stressed therapy. <laughs> like this is your therapy okay but for the 13 year old would mm -hmm. you recommend that they create that they start their own label mm. yeah I mean eventually we're all just businesses right in the end of the day that's where we're moving is everybody is their own entity everybody is their own LLC and their brand so I think it would be smart to yeah but also collaborating is, is important I think it's just I think I think it's about who there's so many ways to independently collaborate at this point, you know, like yeah. there's like Femme It Forward, there's She Is The Music, there's all these different agencies now that are just operating very differently than these classic record labels. I think the classic record label is, yeah, I, I think it's dead. I just think that there needs to be flashcards like this for all you kids because I've spoken to a lot of artists um, that don't understand, like when they log into their ASCAP or their BMI, they don't understand how that works. Like your writer ID and your publisher ID yeah. number a lot of you guys do not have a publisher ID number because you don't have a publishing company and that's where all the freaking money goes. So if you do end up writing a song for like Nikki or like Dua, you're not going to, they're taking your money, children. Uh oh. So I do want that to be a part of the movement as well. It's like. Yeah, educa whole education. Yeah. When you register the song that you just produced with your dream girl bag, Scarlett is also going to explain to you how to register your song properly. Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think that's a huge problem, too. Yeah. No, it's I just, mean, it is. like <laughs> I'm still learning stuff. I'm like, how yeah. do I. Where is the guidebook? I mean, I'm, you know. Exactly. You could, I know Ari Hairstead has a really great you know, guide to the new music industry. So he's got a lot of all of his resources in there, which should be included. There needs, but there does need to be some sort of new music business blueprint. Yeah. We're not out here. And that's also going to, you know, the reason that there's so much competition specifically among women is, and, and men in the industry is because we used to just be competing for that one spot. Yes. I'm going to get discovered. It's like, that's not real anymore. It's like, you it's can not. absolutely make a living off of your art yeah at a variety of levels it's really you know you get to build your own success at this point like if you want to go that route all right put the engine behind it get a PR company da 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 you you know you want to be a, be a big pop star there's tons well, of tours and stuff thing. like that but there's so many options now right I had a girl ask me two days ago she's like I have some money and I want to give it to a marketing company who should I talk to mm. and I'm like well I have some recommendations but damn like you're right like who do we go to yeah. to get that major label push yeah. mm -hmm. like if you if you have saved up your money and you do really want to push a song it's like all yeah. of these things need to be like on an app mm -hmm. and just made simpler. And then Target needs to have a separate section for influencers that can just <laughs> like, you know, like a one stop right. shop. Right. Like, no, it's totally true. Yeah. I don't know. What is your. Oh, this is a really gritty. 
Okay, I'm ready. What is your opinion on excellence and talent versus mm. quick TikTok fame or just mm. what we're seeing right now? Like the the stuff that's going viral isn't necessarily someone that's trained their whole life to be an artist. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, I think that people are l always going to look for quick entertainment, but they're always going to uh, latch onto things that really resonate with them. And what, you know, what, what will resonate with people is talent, value, high quality, you know, whether it's the, and, and high quality doesn't necessarily have to mean, you know, you recorded it in a $10,000 studio. Cause I don't think, obviously I don't think you have to do that. I think you can record very, um, economically, but high quality is in like, you've taken the time to learn your craft. Mm -hmm. Like, don't come at me with a joke. I've spent my entire life every day trying to be better. You know, I mean, I, I, everybody, I could, I've obviously, I want to be better at piano. I want to learn more instruments. I want to do this, you know, but I, I think that there, I'm, I, I want talent. I want success. I want people who are hardworking and that comes in many, many different shapes and sizes. Yeah. But you can tell when somebody cares about what they're singing and what they're doing. And I'm not interested in the people that are just doing it because. Well, and the reason whatever. why I bring this up like is being because, an entertainer. Yeah. Like that's fine. There's that's that that's a profession being an entertainer. But yeah. like, you know, I think that there's a very, very big difference between being. There's 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 Gaga and then there's impersonators, you know, mm -hmm. it's like Gaga is the talent. Impersonators are the, are the entertainers. What I have found with with people who are like old school, like just amazing at what they do, they do not want to post. They do not want to deal with social media. Um, some of my friends, I have to, I like, I'll record their shit for them and be like, you need to post this right now. Right. Or else I'm not your friend anymore. Isn't that the funny thing, though, too, is that the people who kind of don't have a lot to offer are so much happier. Like, they will post and post and post and post and post. <laughs> and the people that are like, Do God, you're so talented. <laughs> like, I'm obsessed with you. Like, yeah. sorry, I just peek your microphone. Um, but those people, it's like pulling teeth to get them to post. It's so interesting to me. And I think that, I think that that's just something about that's it's a it's a form of exclusive exclusive exclusivity. Sorry, you know that that those performers are viewing. I'm not available. It's it cheapens, you know, it cheapens, and I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. But I'm also I'm on TikTok. I see the yeah. value in that also. Yes, and so my message to y'all who are like really good <laughs> and don't want to post. If we are going to succeed, sometimes you have to jump on what is happening right now. Yeah. You have to be current. Mm -hmm. It's good. And I know it tastes nasty and it sucks, but, you know, it's, it's so hard for, I'm sure for you too. Like it can, you have days where you're like, I have the dopest shit to post and I don't, I don't want to, mm -hmm. I literally don't want to be on my phone for like mm -hmm. six hours doing this right now. Right. But I am just encouraging all of you amazing artists who are laying in bed right now watching this. <laughs> like you need to be posting your shit and you need to hit up Scarlet and learn how to produce. Like that is going to make you so much happier as an artist. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like, so let's get back into the dream girl bag. Um, like everyone raise your hand if you don't know how to produce like a fully produced top 40 pop hit. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, I still have, a, I still have my mentors that I take, I take my songs as far as I can. I do the best that I can. And then I'm like, what does this need? What am I, what am I Well, missing? you produce 369. I produce 369. And that song is insane. I mean, Thank I'm you. like, this is like giving me Macy Gray. Mm. Like it's giving me like, who else is it giving? Just every R&B queen. Mm -hmm. Like it just f sounds radio ready. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's amazing. I I couldn't have done it without P. Cruz. He does all my mixing, and he's yeah. my he's he's my senior producer that I'll ask for tips, tricks. So there, does this sound? Is it a little too this? Is it a little too that? You know, like. But I think that music has always been collaborative. You know. It's, yeah. It's about getting over the hump that I 
can't uh, if I can't do a top 40 then I can't do it at all right yes that is like such that's like with anything it's like how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time <laughs> my my dad always says that and Nobody I hate it eat nobody's eating elephants my dad <laughs> loves to say that phrase so it sticks with me so <laughs> oh my. blame my dad okay sorry vegans <laughs> no Peta, we're, we're kidding we're kidding I would never <laughs> fake ferns right <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's one baby step at a time yeah because all every single one of those producers too whether they you know they're not going to admit it to you but they all started somewhere too I am that person mm -hmm. if it is not the biggest and the best I'm not going to do it like oh, I yeah. do, oh my you god it sucks to be that. yeah stopped in my <laughs> tracks because I don't have all the right equipment or da 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 I was just talking to my friend Chloe about this this morning she's like don't buy anything else Right. Just wait until I get there. Right. Let me look at it. Like, And that's that's something uh, that I was doing a lot as well before I decided to just go travel and do the bag. Yeah. I had a surplus of equipment. Yeah. And I was making nothing with it. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, a lot of the time, and this is classic consumer capitalism mentality where it's like, if I can just get that. I will be good. And it's like, well. God damn it. No. I know. Now you just have less space and one more thing to learn. You know, like, have you mastered the things that you have in your, in your, in your bag? You know, yeah. start small. Do you know how to just record your own vocals first? Then just put some vocal tracks together. Put some vocal harmonies together. And then once you have that, you know, your voice is a great instrument. You can pretty much make a whole song with your it, voice. Seriously. You don't even really need to have a ton of sounds. Like if you can just beatbox, you know. Yeah, stack those harms, honey. Stack them up. And, right. you know, get like a four right. on the floor. Yep. Whatever. Because you can make a demo like that. You know, you get some cool vocal effects going on. Then you use Splice. Splice is you know, great. Or you just find some audio samples a lot of producers will make, you know, because then it, then it becomes kind of cool where now I've the producers that some producers that I've wanted to work with that wouldn't work with me. Now I've downloaded their samples and I'm like, well, here now I've produced a song with your sample. Exactly. It's a new way to work with people and come cross promo children, cross promo, you know, multifaceted coming from, you know, with not just coming with an, an ask but coming with an offer as well. Yes. You know? you know what? I heard you say that too um, in another interview. You're like, I did not come to LA asking for shit. Like no. I came to LA serving all of you guys. Yeah. The answer and the fire <laughs> and the, you know, I mean, really because it's, and then people are like, wait, how did you do that? Can I work with you? Like yeah. it's, yeah, it's and that's the era that we're in is like you create it mm -hmm. and then someone up here will be like, OK, fine, I'll help you. Right. No, I mean, it's, it's it's about building your own. I mean, it's about becoming your own dream girl, right? Like, yeah, it, it really is like what it comes down to it is just how can you customize your life so much to where there's nothing that you don't absolutely love coming through the cracks anywhere. Because then one, you know, like it's you're we're just giant magnets that are attracting the things that we already have in our space. So if you are having these people that are choosing, like you mentioned your friend, you tried to warn her about going with this guy. If you're having people in your space that are choosing to put themselves in danger, you know, like it's it can it can be really hard to try and you can't save everybody. No. You know? No. And that's a dang and and this is a controversial topic. This is a dangerous, you know, because you want to be there for your friends, but also you have to let people make their choices. Yeah. But you also have to recognize that people's choices around you impact your life. Just like the choices that I was making when I was toxic were impacting the people around me. And now I've had to just retract and try to just be neutral. Yeah. And try to only offer good things and not you know, fall into the toxic cycle of it all. You yeah. Know? Because but it, it's it, it so is, easy. It's like this an industry. ebb and flow. It is. It it's is. an ebb and yeah. flow. And like you can be here and be safe and have your boundaries. But when we go back out into the wild, it's right. There's no controlling the jungle. And no, there's not. Yeah. Especially when you're a I business I love to think owner. there is. I love to think that I'm, I'm so powerful that I can control my energy at all times. <laughs> I mean, but I can't. I really can't. Yeah. It's yeah. But like we're day. saying this to you guys to to allow you to remember that like I know Abraham Hicks can be annoying because she's like, just 
believe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you are. Right. And what whatever happens, we're attracting. It's like you don't have to take the blame for all of that. Like we <laughs> planet Earth is yeah. really crazy. So it's like you go back out, you get the shit done, and then you come back home and recover. It's like mm-hmm. Who mm-hmm. and and like taking the shame and out release, of it, like release it. Yeah, releasing it. Sage it away. Sage mm-hmm. it away. Honestly, what program do you use to create a beat? I create all of my beats in Logic. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. I started because I started in GarageBand. You know, um, I used to create little beats and stuff on my phone. Yeah, when I was living in Seattle, and because um, I've never created a beat before, so I have no idea. Logic, I have Pro Tools. Logic. Oh, you have Pro Tools. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you, I mean you can create a beat on Pro Tools, obviously. Um, I don't know how to use Pro Tools. Okay. Every DAW is different. Yeah, they're like drastically different. So once you once you learn one, then you kind of can expand from there. Yeah. I think next I'm going to use uh, learn how to use Ableton Live because that's the one that you can do live looping yeah which I really want to get into um I want to get one of those live looping pads um so you're gonna have logic and Ableton so I don't have to feel guilty if I end up getting logic no way Ableton no get get it you can have all three you can have all three and I don't have to feel bad about it oh yeah you should because they all do different things yeah but learn how to use it first Mm mm-hmm Ableton Live, though, I think is good for live, you know, uh, obviously. But when you're playing, you can sa- you can sample your – or put put different sounds on your samples and, like, yes. cue, cue them live or, like, you know, record different vocal patches. Yes. Like kind of like Imogen Heap, you know, used to use yeah. sample pads. and, and Well, and you guys know, like, there's a few girls on TikTok that will do their live set and, like, they'll record Love, yeah. and then, like, stack the harm live. It's so crazy. Yes. No, I want to do that immediately. Yes, <laughs> me too. I love that shit. Like... I love watching those videos and especially because, I, you know, guitar players do it a lot. Guitars, guitars have their like looper pedal. Yeah. But now, you you know, I'm just trying to learn how to do it. Vocally. Yeah. Like I want a <laughs> unicorn mic and like every time the preset changes, like glitter comes out of the ass, like just something super girly. Oh, my gosh. You know, I know. So that's the other that's the other thing is that I can't wait for designer dream girl bags <gasps> like the Gucci dream girl producer bag. Are you kidding? <sighs> No, can I wait? I want a hot pink one. Yeah, no, uh, that's 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 the next part. That's the exciting part. Because right <gasps> we now we need to call Paris Hilton. We need to call Paris Hilton. She would honestly probably love this. I need to make her one. I need to send her one. Paris. Paris. We're gonna talk. Paris. To She's I need to get you a Dream Girl producer bag because I know you're a DJ and you're on the go, and I will make you. <gasps> one with um, diamond studded dream girl okay fine she can have the pink one I want like a faux fur one with like <laughs> a faux fur one would be so sick or like fur line well no you don't want fur lined I guess we might get in the it might get into the microphone yeah just a little bit but no fur. this is the fun part like bringing fashion into music production Right? Yeah. Kind of uncharted territory. Well, I'm a visual learner. I need color. Right. Like, I need, right. you know? It's we need like, to make it fun. It's so... God damn it. And I, I feel like I also only wanted to start doing music production because Logic has become so much more intuitive, where before it was, like, learning this crazy software that was just, like looked like algebra to me calculus yes yeah and I'm like I'm good but now it's like color-coded and it's like easy dragon you know it's like it's just more intuitive um women are just more you know women are creative obviously there's yeah there's analytical women out there I'm a creative woman and as a creative woman because I'm an artist I need things to be a little more less linear and yeah. boring right like yeah like I, I, I need to I should, I should be having fun making this yes yeah I agree um, so do you think there is a difference between men and women when it comes to <laughs> how our brain works? Like when a man looks at the screen, oh, I mean, like men like get off on like fucking boring ass. Right. Shit. <laughs> like, I just I think it's I think we've proved now that it's estrogen and testosterone. Like, OK. It's like whether whatever you have more of in your brain is like you're going to be different. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna think about different things, you know. Like, yeah, I, I like I, even if the edges were rounded out in the session, and like if the, right. just the font and like, right, literally that would make me want to sit for longer. Yeah, but it looks so ugly that I, I, I feel like I'm in a doctor's office. Like, right, you're like, what are these charts and graphs? It's like, so I don't gross. <laughs> like, what math class am I? In? Yeah, like I'm like I'm. Is this a test? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to redo high school. Like that was a no, nightmare 100%. for me. No, hundred percent. No, that's so that's so valid and and very real. Yeah. So hopefully we can make it more fun, and more yeah. accessible, and overall prettier. Oh wait. So how long are you in LA? 
I'm here until Friday morning. Friday morning. And then I go to Dallas and I'm opening for Paul Wall. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> yes. Paul Wall. Might, have, okay, might so- have to get my first grill. <laughs> yes, please. Alligator Jesus will hook you up. Shout out to Alligator Jesus. I have a full grill that I just wore in the no. House of Royale Shut. music video. Oh my God. Yes. Okay. Full rap verse, like bars, ah, bars, bars. I need bars, to see honey. this. Um, but I'm asking you because for all of the women out here in LA that want to work with a female producer, including my ass, um, what does it take to schedule a session with you? What, what does that look like? Yes. Um, thank you for asking. Yeah. Right now I'm doing virtual sessions, so I'm predominantly focused on vocal lessons, songwriting sessions, because those are easy to do virtually, right? But I am working with a couple select clients to build out a beat. But because I this is my first time really working with other people, I've, you know, I've I've found some moderate success making my own songs come to life. It's a whole nother ballgame when you're working with somebody else's vision. Yeah. And how to like, you know, I, I always I always uh use the the metaphor or the analogy, I guess, of like when Harry Potter is like pulling the memories out of his head with the wand. Like that's what you're trying to do as a music producer. Like you're trying to literally pull an image or a sound out of yes. somebody's head. And it's yes. so hard. It's like, yeah. you know, how, the other thing that you can start to learn if you're if you're le- wanting to learn how to produce is how to communicate with the producer. Step one, you know, like what – what sounds, what is a slap versus a kick? You know, yes. what is, what are all of these different terminologies? What is a, what is a riser versus what is a crash? All of these things, um, you know, that I spent years just over the shoulder, over the I literally shoulder just got in a people. fight. I just <laughs> like, got in a fight. What are you doing? With- what does that do? What does that do? Hey, what does that do? Yeah. You know, I, I literally a screaming match with one of my friends the other night. <laughs> oh no. And he's like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And I'm like, mm. I know, but I want it to sound like right. how I recorded last, t- like the vocal chain from last right. time. And it's like, I couldn't show him because right. I don't motherfucking know. Right. And it's like, we're both mad at each other. And I'm like, look. You're the producer. You're supposed to know how to do this shit. But also right. I take responsibility because I should be able to explain to you what I'm right. trying to well, say. It's, it's really hard. It's like describing a color, you know? Yeah. It's, it's like, how do you describe it? It's not easy. That's why it's so it's so important that you're like. That you know what you're talking about. The that, vocabulary, the that, words. But also that you're like working with people who are going to have a level of grace with you. Yes, yes, yes. To be like, okay. And we're fine I'm now. Willing. It turned out amazing. Yeah. But. <laughs> but I've had those moments too where they're like. Three minutes? Oh, shit. It's three or four now. <gasps> oh. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you my one of my questions. Um, what will the first song that you produce sound like? Okay. There's an artist named Cobra. Mm. And the song is called Brand New Bitch. And I personally would like to get a group of us girls together and just do it because all it is is a track, like a. Right. Mm -hmm. And just talky, talky, Mm -hmm. easy. Love that. We don't have to worry about it being a hit record. I Mm -hmm. just want it to be like a fun club kid, four on the floor, sexy, hot. And the lyrics are like, it's not going either way. It's just like. Lyrics that you're like, ooh, I feel right. like a badass bitch right, right now. Right, right. That's I'm, what I'm I want to do. Right okay. now, I want to do that Easy. with a group of us. Easy. Easy. Mm-hmm. No pressure. But that's what I want it to sound okay. like. So would you be interested if I was to start uh, Dream Girl Academy and was weekly Zoom lessons where we all get together and create a, a beat together? Yes. Okay. We're scheduling it on camera right now. Okay. Perfect. Well, stay tuned for Dream Girl Academy and the official Dream Girl bag. You'll be seeing a commercial very soon as soon as I can get it in my hands. Yes. I can't wait. So excited. Yes. Okay, you you guys. So please follow Dream Girl Scarlet on every single social media platform and go on her website and pre-order the bag and learn how to produce and schedule a virtual session with Scarlet so that you can learn how to produce and ladies like dm us like if you feel insecure or you feel you know upset Mm -hmm. or sad or scared or whatever it is like yeah talk to us like let us know how you're feeling and you know you you have a safe space with scarlet and i and i know that i'm i am going to create a list of female producers that we can all hit up 
it's happening this week. I'm doing it. Yes. And I think that would be great. I, I'm also working on a playlist, a dream girl playlist of all female producers. Amazing. That people can listen to and also submit to. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's it's going to start with just breaking the mentality that you can't. So yeah. you know, schedule schedule a call with me. And yeah. And like, let me help you talk through those mental blocks and get get going. You know? Because the female producers need to pay rent, too. Yes. They need to make money. And yeah. we're not calling them. Right. So it's it's time. Yes. We're going to do it. Put me to work. <laughs> Thank you for watching the first episode of House of Royale. I will see you guys next week with another amazing guest. Thank you so much to Scarlet Park. You are a goddess <laughs> and you are saving the world. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye.